But really and truly, we get to have a reset with these AI tools. We get to, we get the chance to, as I like to say, imagine again. Um, skills and qualifications and all those things are cute, but now really it's just about who has the best imagination. So I'd like to show you a bit more of a blend of AI, but with a human touch. My name is uh, Manon. I am the Chief Product Officer of um, Mind Valley. So today, what I want to try and share with you and what I want you guys to be able to do when you actually, when, I, when we finish this session, or at least have an idea of how to do when we finish this session, is create photorealistic images. I will also show you how to design spaces. I'll also teach you how to edit marketing materials. And lastly, how to make your own music using AI. So everything you saw and heard just there was done between 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. today. So that's what I want to try and teach you guys today. Uh, everyone up for that? Cool. Um, so I'll start with the um, with the generative images and the photorealistic images. This abbreviation is something that um, I sort of came up with after seeing loads of prompts similar to what Vision was showing you. Um, so first is output. So this is actually what is the image supposed to be? Um, it could be a cinematic scene. It could be a, uh, it could be fashion photography. It could be a product photography. Um, the subject in this case, uh, I, I was working with a, a friend of mine, Idris, where we were creating, um, a campaign for a telecommunications company in Sierra Leone. So I literally put in the words, Sierra Leonean teenager, um, looking happy backpack middle of, you know, the, the city or whatever. So specifically outlining the subject um the background and again you can specify do you want it to be out of focus in focus a specific city a place a market um emphasizes which after doing a bit of reading i discovered that there are um we call them corpuses in machine learning right but essentially it's like dictionaries or like clusters of of words or tags that specifically organize how it understands um you know, a, a color, for example. So one of an example of emphasizers might be uh, something like yellow core. Yellow core means pretty much the spectrum of, or the grade, uh, you know, the spectrum of the gradient uh, in the color picker where you see sort of yellow tones. It starts, it kind of understands all of the, what we call hex codes in design, you know, for, for all of those shades of yellow. So it will try and utilize that spectrum or zoom in on that spectrum to make sure you get kind of yellow or, or teal or whatever tinted finish. So you Pretty much say the thing and then you write the word core afterwards i'll show you an example and then the last one vision covered already which is you can really specify cameras so yeah so if we take a look at what that looks like uh, a quick demo for you here so creating photorealistic images i made this one probably just before i did that video so like 11 30 this morning what does it say it should say the time 120 was afterwards that was today um so you can see here i've pretty much followed that structure output it's a land it's landscape photography uh, inspiring captivating the subject is the back of a group of teenagers, or I even spelt it wrong, uh, overlooking the uh, the sunset uh, from a cliff. Uh, the background, I want Thai islands. My wife and I are thinking about going on holiday soon, and I'm actually headed to Malaysia to the Mind Valley office. The influences uh, or emphasizes, I sort of put holiday photography, um, and then you can see the core word here is cinema core. I wanted to sort of feel a little bit cinematic, um, and then I mentioned a bunch of camera specifications, which I have saved in a in a notepad somewhere. You'll notice here also that I used uh, some, the, this uh, little parameter that is hyphen hyphen V 5.2. That refers to the version of mid journey. And once you guys get more into it, I won't kind of uh, dwell on it too long, but every so often they release a new version and it always comes with some really cool features. One of the really amazing features they released in v, uh, version 5.2 is the thing that allowed me to make that video of that girl with the headphones on. Um, which I'll explain how I did in a second, but it allows you to essentially zoom out of an image after you've generated it, which is pretty fucking amazing. So uh, I'll show you that in a second. In fact, let's show you right now. I might need a volunteer for this, so stick your hand up if you fancy volunteering, and we'll get a mic run around to you. Um, go ahead and pick one, mic runner. Thank you. 
Um, so you can see here, I've got my my uh, my mid journey Discord open. And by the way, look, I, I'm I'm hyper aware that we've glazed over the uh, process of downloading Discord, creating an account, getting into mid journey, all of that stuff. Um, happy to talk about that afterwards. The reason for glazing over it is that now there are so many great guides online of how to do this that you'll learn how to do it. I promise in less than five minutes once you once you find a YouTube video and I can, and we can link some as well. Um, so the, as you can see, the last thing I did before I legged it over here to get on stage was, um, was create this image because I was missing one image. Uh, because I spe specified version 5.2, um, I got a few extra options, right? Uh, the extra options are zooming out, um, a custom zoom, and also these arrows. And now what these arrows do, which I can uh, maybe run in the background whilst I'm talking, is they actually will pan the image right or left or up or down which again is pretty amazing because remember that thing above or below this image it's created doesn't exist yet. So what I'll do for now is I'm gonna zoom out of this and I'm just gonna let it run in the background whilst I start a new prompt. I'm gonna copy all of this. We have a, we have a person, right? Awesome, awesome. What's your name, sir? Florian. Florian, awesome. Okay, I'm just going to quickly type this in. So you start with slash imagine. And then I've just pasted the thing from above and we're just going to tweak it. So let's start with an output. What are we looking for? I said landscape photography. What would you like, Farina? An underwater image of Atlantis. All right. So we're going to go for underwater photography. And you said of what, sorry? Uh, Atlantis. The uh, Atlantis. World of Atlantis. All right. Cool. Maybe some uh, unicorns. And uh, anything else? Some octopus with uh, 10 arms. <laughs> what? Okay, cool. These are wild. Um, whoa, that is scary. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna what go with the than ten arms. I think Atlantis is definitely the lost city, as you can see here, and we can see why it's lost given these emissions. Um, I'm gonna go with the slightly friendly underwater fashion face, if that's okay, just so we don't freak out the kids online. Um, I will upscale that one, and that shows you really, really quickly how you can get pretty amazing photography, right? Uh, or photorealistic images. Remember, it can't really be photography because it's uh, something that doesn't exist underwater. Or does it? Here we go. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll zoom out of that one just so you can see the end of that demo and see that, you know, I can take that image and do something new with it straight off the bat. Everybody knows what Photoshop is, Adobe Photoshop. Yeah, so they have a new feature, as some of you may have heard of, called Generative Fill, right? Um, generative fill kind of does the same thing as what I just showed you on the zoom stuff, meaning you can uh, create a white space around this room and zoom out, um, or you can extend it to the left or to the right. But actually, you can also change objects within the image, um, as simple as changing color, or you can go a step further and just change the entire thing. So what I did here, if I remember correctly, was I sort of said, there's no way that I'm going to be in a hotel room that does not have a screen so I will put one here, right here. I'm terrible at drawing, as you can see, but I've tried to select this area here, and I'm just gonna say large flat screen TV. You can see my fantasies are not that interesting. So uh, yeah, you can see it's put, uh, it's put a TV screen there. Now, if I run back over, it's not just that one screen, because you might not like that. It'll give you a couple of different options, right? So that one looks more realistic. So let's leave that one in there. Now, I uh, might want to, start getting into my interior decoration bag of which there really is not one in real life but let me say that up here it feels like there should be a chandelier otherwise what kind of hotel is this um let's just say large chandelier and like teardrop what do they call those things just glass T crystals all right so we're going to try and pop the chandelier on top and you'll see there in a second it's going to do that hopefully and give me a couple of options for that. And really you can just go around and do this on the entire room or anything that you generate. There's the chandelier. There's a slightly different one. That's a little bit too small for us. Uh, that's nice too. Maybe I should have picked a bigger area. But you can see very, very quickly, you can change individual objects. You can even change that entire city that this room exists in as you saw on my previous transition. So that's uh, Photoshop and that's called generative fill. The next thing I promise to teach you is editing marketing materials. This is, I just picked this off Google as one of the most iconic 
uh, advertising campaigns of all time. And I thought, what might we do with that today? So as you saw from the transition earlier, I replaced the thing in a hand with a water bottle. Um, now I'm going to try and do something different and unrehearsed, which always goes well. I'm going to say a uh, cup of coffee. Oh, it's a nice, that's a nice, oh, there we go. Milkshake, cold coffee. Uh, very narrow, very narrow coffees here. But uh, you get you get the picture. I'm going to go with, I'm going to go with, I'll go with the second one. Maybe that's some kind of like, that's a nootropic, that's a nootropic coffee, right? That's it. Uh, so now I fancy that anyone with a nootropic coffee needs to be rocking some sunglasses. Vision always goes at my neck when it comes to my glasses. He's like, when are you going to get some new glasses? So let's go with uh, trendy sunglasses. Cool. Yes, yes, yes. Making your own soundtrack. So um, I do make music. And I'm not a super gifted musician, I promise. I'm like probably in the lowest 2% of musicians in the world. I can't really play any instrument that well. I make music with computers and uh, I've been doing it for a long time. But it really, like Photoshop, it requires you to master, you know, a specific software or tool set. And it takes a long, long time. And then on top of that, you have to have good ideas, right? In my opinion, anyway. Like you get to a point where you're only really going to listen to the song if it sounds good and, uh, and has a certain level of polish. So I've spent a long time doing that. But of course, now, as you guys may have read, there are certain platforms. Uh, Google has recently released something called Music LM, which allows you to, with a text prompt, just like we do in Mid Journey, create something that sounds pretty damn good pretty quickly. And that track that you heard uh, when it was zooming out of that, uh, uh, that, that girl's face, I think is this one. Yeah, I think it's that one. So um, that was generated just by me uh, typing the words soulful R&B beat with horns and piano. Very, very quickly though, I mean, I went through three or four cycles, found something I liked, and then I'll show you what I did. You know, I took that, I took that download, actually. Um, I have it here saved somewhere. You can see it's called AI Test Kitchen Soulful R&B Beat with horns and piano, right? That's the, that was the prompt I typed in. This is not an AI tool, as you can see. <laughs> This is a very complicated music making software. Well, it's not that complicated, it is. And, uh, and I downloaded that file. And as you can see, I'm just gonna show you here, the thing that you're looking at here, maybe which you recognize is a waveform. And what I'll do is I'll just drag in that file to show you right now that it's the same waveform, right? Um, I just shortened it and cut it and whatever to make it fit. And what I did here essentially was I took that file um, that it composed for me and just with what you know whatever knowledge i have in the space of as you saw i literally made that two o'clock or something when i was just before i was on my way down here that's what you heard from google lm yes i just didn't want to play that loop for you although i thought that that might be i mean again i was being pedantic maybe it was already impressive enough but i just thought nah let's make it feel like it kind of like grows into the song right so I, I dragged that in and all I did was I chopped off the end there to give it a bit of swing and flavor. And then I just added one, I just added one effect, I think, or, or two effects maybe. And this is how it sounds. And you'll see the dial go down here if you look carefully at where my mouse is. Voila, All right? So. That's all I did. It took me two seconds. And then, finally, what I did was drag that file into a file tool that I'll show you called Runway ML. Oh, sorry, to Canva. Uh, drag those two two files in, and uh, one of them was the video that I created using this thing, Runway ML. Uh, I basically went into Mid Journey, used the zoom out feature, zoomed out a bunch of times, dragged all of those pictures into this project. And after I dragged them into this project, it created a video for me. And as, as you can see, that's the video you saw. Internet's kind of slowing us down a li little bit here, but you've seen the video before. And just to show you, all I did was type in that prompt and zoom out and zoom out 
and zoom out. And I use something called custom zoom, which basically instead of two times zooming out, I just put 1.25 instead. And in runway ML, um, all you need to do is you just tell it that you want to do this thing called um, frame interpolation. Uh, it's it's literally an option, right? It's this thing called frame interpolation. Clicked that, picked the images I want, dragged them in here, and before I knew it, it generated that video for me. I grabbed that video, came into Canva, drag and drop, quite literally, and drag and drop of the audio that I exported, which is called Can You See? Because it sounds like it says Can You See at the end. Right? Pop that in there, and... Yeah, it created the image for me. I mean, the video for me. I hit share, I hit download, and it downloaded it. And I really want to pretend like I did a, made a lot of effort for this deck, but I just dragged it into this and pressed play, <laughs> and it and it and it worked. So that is how you can literally make your own soundtrack. You can make your own ad actually, um, and you can just make really interesting content very very quickly with a handful of tools. So I hope that helps. Okay, guys, I think I've overstayed my welcome. Thank you for your time. See you around.